Spring Hill. And so I think the city's very vital in that partnership with them on, like people have said, on taxes, on different events that can happen. I'd love to see, um, like Roy said, I'd love to see them have regular meetings, meeting together on what different things they can do together and how they can, how they can help each other grow each other. So. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. It looks like we have about eight minutes left, so we'll go through these questions when we get okay. Okay, Brian Neal. What are you going to do about our $34.5 million debt and the high million? I think uh, doing as full and transparent evaluation of our budget is probably the number one priority in order to uh, decipher what our priorities can be and how much we can allot to those priorities. Uh, I think establishing that priority list, I think we all pretty much have the same priority list that's you know roads, infrastructure, uh, lowering the middle levy, lowering the debt. Um, parks, uh, trails and connectors, um, you know, high quality staff, you know, we, we all want all those things and uh, we just need to find the right balance to be able to touch all of those things and also, you know, not continue to increase our mill levy, uh, continue to drive it down. Um, but as some others have stated here, there's going to be some times where um, you know, it, it might have to stay the same for a period of time and we have a lot of investments that the city wants and needs to make um, for our community right now and, um, you know, looking at what our financial situation is and the best way to deal with it um, is going to be a challenge for this new council um, and it's a, a challenge that you know, I very much look forward to. Um, you know, I want low taxes as much as everybody here does. Um, I don't think there's a citizen that you would run into in town that would ever tell you we want higher taxes. Um, but I, I also want service and I also want, um, you know, amenities. Um, you know, I think parks is an area um, that a lot of people want. Uh, I know Mr. Eckert is passionate about a, a park project and I am too. Um, and I think that's something that we just can't neglect. It, we have to leave those as a high priority as well. Um, and, and figuring this out is, is gonna be a hard part of it. Uh, increasing sales tax will help to bring in more revenue, but that's gonna be a longer term project. Thank you, Brian. All right, let's go down here Joe. Um, I mean, for me personally, I'd like to see, I know we've heard the word transparent a lot, but I think it's an important word as well. Um, I'd like to see a transparent, in-depth review of the budget. I know this year's budget is already, is already knocked out, but a review of the budget in the future to see where each dollar is being spent and see what we, you know, the unnecessary things that we can cut out or can allot in a different, in a different area. I think there's a lot of times things are set for a certain thing and either don't get used or get carried over and then maybe we can you know cancel those items out and use them in a different place that would help bring down that debt um, I'd like to get I'd like to get you know a lot of input from the community members on what's important to them because sometimes we spend money on stuff that we think is important but we don't get enough feedback from community members or maybe people don't you know people don't come to the meetings or or lots of different reasons why you might not get not get feedback but I think we could uh, get feedback from community members, find out what's important, and then find out what we want to spend those dollars on and where we can save them. Um, obviously, infrastructure, roads, all those things are very important. I think we're all glad to see Webster Street and all, all those uh, roads being tackled now and a lot more plans in the future for that. So that's nice, nice to see. Um, I think there's ways that you can um, get different programs like the cars program that we got that funded about half of the about half of webster street was funded from a, a federal grant called cars and i think there's a lot of programs out there that the federal government has that you can get that would help take those funds that we might have allotted to that and we could use grant funds instead and be able to use money for a different area that would help lower that debt ceiling all right thank you joe chat are we oh, other chat <laughs> Thank you. The, the question is about the budget. Am I am I accurate? Okay. And, yeah. And, and the debt that we have. Well, we just recently had a city council meeting about this. 
where we wanted to review line by line, as Joe mentioned, great idea, line by line. Let's go through it. And after about an hour, we had covered nine pages. But with me, that's okay, because I planned on being there till midnight. That's our job as city council, to go through the budget, to forecast what we're gonna spend it on, and not be afraid to bring in the head of the departments to ask, why do you need this money? What is this money going for? That's what we need to do. That's spending money. I'm not a big fan of lease purchases, financing to buy things. Sometimes we just don't need things. Sometimes we can wait a year or two until we get that product or that vehicle or that whatever, computer, software program. We've got to be frugal in our approach. We have to be responsible. The whole idea of the transparency was having that meeting where we went over the budget. Wasn't a lot of people physically there. I pray there was a lot of people online watching it. But that was my good faith attempt in going through that and identifying areas to where we can't just move money from pot A to pot B to pot C, but perhaps eliminating some of those expenditures. That's the responsibility. That's the duty and responsibility of the city council. That's why I want to be on city council. That's what I bring to the table. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. We're going home. Yes, I think there's a variety of things that we can do. One of the things that I mentioned in my introductory statement was that one of the things that really needs to be paramount is that the city needs to begin to engage in long-range planning and strategic planning. If you don't know where you're going, you don't know how you're going to use your money. You don't know what taxes to raise. You don't know what uh, loans to take out. And I think that's the critical first thing that the city needs to do. Then it needs to do what I refer to as a forensic audit of the budget. That's you bring in an accountant that can look at specifically where money comes from, how it's used, who collects it, who spends it, why do we spend it. Once you do that, you can begin to get a handle on what your resources are and what flexibilities you have. You define, you begin to define the way you use money by where you want to go, not just how much budget you have for things that seem to be priorities. Otherwise, you'll never achieve your goals. I believe that uh, you take advantage, for example, of low interest rates to refinance those loans that you have. That way you in don't end up in spending as much money as you're spending right now for interest. So if you begin to look at those things, you begin to address and look faster, in a faster way, lower those loans, those 30, at $30 billion that we owe. Thank you. I could talk uh, for 30 minutes about a budget and debt. Um, first and foremost, um, I believe that money is not ours, and man. I'm telling my wife there was people tonight that couldn't hear me. Hello? Hello? Oh, green light? Do you want to try it? I, I can talk loud. How about that? Um, first and foremost, I believe that the, um, all money is not ours and that it's money of God's that has been given to us. And I believe that we have a um, fiduciary right uh, and responsibility to manage that money for God. And that goes more than just our personal expenses, but also as taxpayers and, and the city leaders as well. And um, our, our debt concerns me. I do not believe in debt in my personal life, and I believe in a budget in my personal life. Being 36 years old, I've done a budget for 20 years every month at the beginning of the month where I allocate every dollar. And I, um, on my business side of things, that is my biggest strength. 
I am taken to locations to where um, they are not profitable, and I make them profitable with the same amount of money by cutting out expenses. And it all goes down by a transparent budget and by a transparent review. I agree 100% with Mr. Eckert. We've actually had conversations about this well before I decided I wanted to run, um, but we have to be able to understand where every dollar is going and where every dollar is coming from. And reoccurring expenses is a, is a big issue. And we also need to understand that um, if the budget is $10,000, um, if we're going to go 10001 that needs to come back to council and we need to decide where is that extra dollar coming from. And I agree with the lease purchases. It's a, it's a joke to me. It's not a lease. It is a, we put it in this account, we paid cash for it, and if we need to borrow the money, we will, which we have done, and then we are still owing on a cop car that we don't even own anymore. And to me, that is just a, a horrible um, use of taxpayer money. But I think I agree we need to be line by line. If we need to be there till 4 a.m., we be there till 4 a.m. and we understand where everything is going. It's allocated and accounts like miscellaneous do not exist. Miscellaneous is what I call blow money and people will blow that money. So that's how I have. Thank you, Roy. All right, we have one question remaining. I'm going to through this so and now we do have an opportunity to be able to start but we're going to go to one minute on this, okay? All right, so there's so much division right now. What would you do to unify our community? I think just making making every voice matter. I think everybody's opinion, whether you agree with it or not, matters. And I think it's our jobs as elected officials to listen to those opinions and really listen to them, not just take it in one ear and out the other, but really listen to them because sometimes you can change your mind. Sometimes somebody has better. I think that's important um, for us to, to listen to other voices. Um, I've always prided myself in, in being able to bring people together. Um, I've, I had lots of opportunities to do that as, as a kid, as an adult, um, owning a business and stuff, being able to bring a bunch of working guys together that might not get along very well, but be able to complete a project and get it done on time. And by the end, they're friends and you know they work years and years together. So. I think there's just a lot of different ways that you can do that. All right, Chad, thank you, Joe. I, I, I do realize there's some division. I don't think it's as big as what people want to make. I think people get attention drawn to themselves when they're saying that the community is so divided. Just not seeing it in the people I talk to, which is a lot. But um, I'm the middle of five boys. My mom's a saint in heaven.